Welcome back to the His and Her Money Show with America's number one money couple. I'm Talit. And I'm Ty. And we're from hisandhermoney.com, where we're managing money, marriage, and everything in between. Well, guys, we're back with another edition of the His and Her Money Show and another great debt-free story for you guys. We're going to be talking with a young lady named Kara, and she got out of $25,000 worth of debt. But the most amazing part about that is not just the fact that she got out of $25,000 worth of debt, but she started out this journey with a $15,000 income. You heard me right. That's an annual salary that she started with, $15,000. That's right. So definitely watch this interview and let it inspire you and touch you on ways to help encourage you on your debt-free journey. So let's check it out. Hey, Kara. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, Kara. Hello, thank you so much for having me. We're excited to have you on because you have an incredible story, a journey of getting out of debt. And we know our audience is going to be totally inspired by it and want to follow in your footsteps. But before we get into the details of your story, can you go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Kara Perez. I live in Austin, Texas. I'm 27 and I'm all about living well on a budget. Um, we get told that you have to spend an arm and a leg to live the good life and that's just not true. Love that. No, she just spoke my language, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about your debt. You were once uh, deep in debt and successfully have paid it all off. How did you first come to being in debt and what was it? Um, all of my debt was student loans from my undergrad degree. I had $25,302 total and it was just from getting my bachelor's. Um, I'm lucky I never had any credit card debt and I really worked hard to minimize expenses outside of that. But um, that student loan debt really hung over my head for a few years. <laughs> and from start to finish on your journey to getting out of debt, how long did it take you? Start to finish took three and a half years. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. So for you, what was it that made you, I mean, because most people, I mean, the statistics show that most people graduate with $28,000 worth of student loan debt. So you were just being the typical average college graduate. So for you, what was the eye-opening moment or trigger that awakened you to say, you know what, I don't, I don't have to live with this debt. I can do something about it, and I'm going to do something about it. Um, so summer of 2014, I sort of woke up and realized, you know, I'm a few years out of college. I'm still working very part-time. I don't have the life that I want, and I'm nowhere near it. I, it would take a miracle for me to get there. And it scared me. I didn't want to live the way I was living. I wanted to get going after my dreams. And so I sort of sat down and had a real conversation with myself. And by far the biggest thing in my way was my debt. It felt like such a huge weight on my shoulder. I couldn't see past it. And I could see all these things like owning a home or traveling long term just slipping away from me because I was going to carry around this debt and all of the bad things that can come with debt for the rest of my life unless I got my act together. Hmm. I like that. So true. So can you talk about the mindset that you had to put yourself in in order to, you know, once you thought about this, like, wait a minute, I'm going to have to get out of debt. What type of mindset did you have to put yourself in to accomplish your goal? Yeah, I'm definitely a goal setter. So once I decided I wanted to get rid of my debt, it was like nothing was going to stop me. I respond really well to deadlines. So I told myself I wanted to pay off all my debt by the end of 2015. And I just totally dedicated myself to that. I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. And I just didn't want to get distracted by anything. So every single day, I would work towards this goal, no matter what it was. Little things, big things. I was just like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm coming for it. Here we go. I'm curious, you know, being you're fresh out of college, young, and most people your age are just kind of living and doing things and having fun. So did you share kind of your epiphany with friends and family? And I'm curious as to what type of reaction did you get from them? Yeah, I definitely did. I was really vocal about paying off all of this debt. Um, so in 2014, I only made $15,000 total throughout the year. So I was wow. a super low income earner. And I'm lucky. I mean, my expenses are incredibly low and I've worked hard to maintain that. But having such a tiny amount of money to work with means that A, I had to make more money in 2015 and B, I had to share everyone around me what I was doing. Otherwise, it was just like 
Kara's become a hermit. She's not leaving her house. What's she doing? Why is she being such a, a weird loser? So I told everyone. I started my blog um, in December of 2014. I told all my friends. I was really vocal about it, especially because I do have a lot of friends who have student loan debt of their own, and it hangs over all of our heads, and everyone feels bad about it, but we don't want to address it. It's like the elephant in the room. And I was like, I'm addressing it. <laughs> it sucks, and I want it to go away. And I want to tell you about how I'm doing it, and I want you to feel empowered to do the same thing. And I was lucky. I was able to pay off all my debt, and now my friends all see me as the personal finance guru. <laughs> and they ask me questions about, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting an IRA, or hey, I really want to get rid of my debt before I go back to grad school, and like, how can I do that? And I love having those conversations with them now. Yeah, I'm curious. So now they're on board, and now they're coming to you for all kind of advice and wisdom. Was that the type of reaction you were getting in the initial stages, or at first were you kind of shunned a little bit? No, I was lucky. I was always really supported by my friends and by my family. Um, my mom in particular, um, I grew up in a single mom household with two brothers, so she went through her own money struggles and was like, yeah, start tackling this now. Don't let it just sit around and get bigger and bigger, worse and worse. So she was really um, supportive, and all of my friends in Austin were super great about it, and my friends from college were really wonderful, and I never, ever heard a bad word about being really committed to becoming debt-free. Love that, love that. So practically speaking, what were some of the strategies um, that and steps that you took to dig your way out of this debt? Honestly, the best thing I did was started making more monthly payments. My interest accrued daily, so if I made a payment each Monday, it meant more of the um, payment was going towards the principal rather than the interest because the interest hadn't gotten so large yet. Um, so that was a huge thing. And then, honestly, I say you know, little things lead to big things. I stopped driving so much so that I didn't have to change my oil as often. I didn't have to spend as much on gas. I stopped buying meat. It was just vegetables and carbs <laughs> at the grocery store. I cooked everything at home. Nothing. We never went out. I have a very kind, very understanding boyfriend. And I was like, date nights inside the house <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and we would make dinner and watch Netflix instead of going out to a restaurant and a movie. Um, we have a university here in Austin, University of Texas at Austin, and they offer a lot of free things like free movies or free lectures, and we started doing those for date nights. Everything everything that could be made free was made free, and everything that was expensive but we could made cheap was made cheap. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Yeah. brilliant, And that's really the way that people have to get this done. And you were willing to do it just for a temporary time, you know, temporary pain for the long-term gain and I think that's incredible and it worked because now you're sitting here and you are debt free yeah. but I'm curious along your journey were there any obstacles or roadblocks that you had to kind of overcome as you were working your way out of debt mm -hmm. yeah well like I mentioned honestly it was just the low income was the biggest thing that I was working against um, I really really need to focus on bringing in more money and being better with that money and making sure that I wasn't Watching it disappear in little ways, like parking tickets. I have a thing with parking tickets. <laughs> uh, so things like that. Um, lowering costs, like I was able to lower my car insurance costs. I was able to negotiate for cheaper rent by doing some things for my landlord a few times this year. Um, but definitely the biggest thing that I had to overcome was just increasing my income. So can you tell us what you believe were some of the important factors that helped you stay motivated and become debt free? Yeah, definitely the personal finance blogosphere. Just yeah. everyone has such incredible stories, whether they have $100,000 in debt or no debt, but they want to live this frugal lifestyle and maybe retire early or just have the ability to um, make their own choices and be financially free. I. Like I said, I have a few friends in town who have their own debt, but I live in a house with three other people in their mid-20s who didn't have any debt. And so for a few, for a while, I kind of felt a little bit ashamed of my debt and was like, oh my gosh, it's kind of embarrassing. I feel alone. None of them have to make these payments. They get to handle their money in a different way than I could. And then going online and finding this community, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm really not alone. 
people have debt from student loans to car payments to mortgages and we're all dealing with it in different ways and in great ways. So I took tips from other people and I just drew a lot of support from the online community. Speaking of support, how were you able to kind of have these conversations with your boyfriend and he not, you know, be a distraction or be a hindrance to you? Because there's a lot of couples out there where one is on board with changing their finances and getting things in the, in order and the other is not so much. So I'm curious how you were able to uh, get him on board. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend is the best. He's just a really considerate person. And he also knows I really cherish a lot of things like my independence and following my dreams. And he's super supportive of that. He wants me to achieve great things. He wants me to be the best version of myself that I want to be. And he's just like endlessly supportive. So and I really value open communication, so I sat him down when I started getting really serious about debt payoff and said, hey, this is something I'm really serious about. This matters a lot to me for X, Y, and Z reasons. Here are you know, X, Y, and Z ways I want to go about that. Here's how I think it'll affect us. What do you have to say about that? And I felt like keeping the communication lines open throughout the entire process, as well as taking time to really show him I appreciated his support. So. Um, occasionally I would break my little, he loves ice cream, <laughs> so I would break my no um, restaurant ban and I'd go to our favorite um, frozen yogurt place and get him like, you know, a $4 frozen yogurt thing. Thank you so much. Like, we can't do this all the time, but this is for you, for being great. <laughs> um, so little things like that. Awesome. So talk us through the moment when you made your last payment on your student loan. Oh my gosh, June 5th, 2015. Oh, oh my God. best day. <laughs> my parents' <laughs> anniversary. Ever. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I knew that I was going to be able to make the payment that day. I was just waiting for um, the money to come into my checking account. So I remember I sat down at my kitchen table and I went and I checked my loan balance and I made the payment and, you know, clicked send. And it, it felt a little bit anticlimactic. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I wish. There should be a band. There should Everybody be a parade. I've worked so hard mm -hmm. for this. <laughs> um, but I remember sitting back and feeling just like very relieved, so relieved. I didn't have to save my money to pay my debt anymore. I didn't have to check my loan balance on my Mint app or on the website anymore. Like from that moment on, my money was going to be mine and I could do whatever I wanted with it. And so it was this, this beautiful freedom <laughs> that came with that moment. That's awesome. That's incredible, really. Yeah. And I mean, looking back over your journey, you said that the biggest hindrance that you had to deal with was your income. And I'm sure that there's plenty of people listening right now who look at their income and say, you know what, I'll never be able to get out of debt because I only make this. So for you, how are you able to do that? How are you able to make this debt freedom happen despite the fact that you had this lower income? To so the person listening right now in your shoes or where you once were, how can they overcome that same hurdle? Yeah, um, I do. I think that's such a great question. And it definitely is. I mean, who do you, we all know we could all use more money, right? <laughs> no one is like, no, no, I'm good on the money front. I don't need any more. <laughs> but it is really important to remember that you do have disposable income. And whether it's $5 or $5,000, it's all about the choices you make with that. So things that seem really mindless, like swiping your credit card for that movie ticket or that extra candy bar, is taking away from that debt payment you could be making. And I always tell people that you know if you make an extra $30 payment a month, that's $360 a year. And all of a sudden, that's like an extra month of payments that you don't have to make anymore. Um, so that's chipping down, chipping down, chipping down at your total amount of time you'll be in debt. So no matter how small it is, even if it feels like a tiny drop in the bucket, I say take that step, put that drop in the bucket because it's like grains of sand and eventually the bucket gets full. Oh, I like that. That's powerful. <laughs> You're right. Put that drop in the bucket. Love that. Love that. So how do you feel now being debt free compared to when you were in debt? Oh my gosh, I love it. I feel great. <laughs> um, I just feel way less stressed. I feel way less panicked. I've been able to build up my savings. I've started to save for retirement. And I feel way more flexible with my whole life. When I was in debt and then when I was very serious about paying my debt off, I was so structured with my money. 
and I do think structure is important, <laughs> but um, it's nice to know that I don't have to make a $500 debt payment. So like I can put $250 in my savings account, you know, $100 in my retirement account, and then I can have that extra money to do whatever I want with. And the possibilities are endless. And that's so wonderful. Awesome. awesome. Now, looking back over your process, the journey that you went through to become debt free, what do you feel has been the biggest life lesson that you learned along the way? I think the biggest lesson I learned was how strong people can be. I found a strength and a capability within myself going on this journey that I never really thought I had. And it was amazing to look back and say, oh my God, I was super dedicated for a year to doing this and I did everything possible. I didn't let anyone turn me away from my goal. I didn't let any obstacle get in my way and I accomplished this and I'm not a super remarkable person I'm just a just a regular gal <laughs> and um, knowing that that is within all of us is just it's empowering and it's inspiring and I've used that to then set other goals for myself and to know I have this knowledge deep inside me like I'm gonna get to those goals too too just like I got to this other one so I'm I'm curious, what's the new goal? I mean, you just went through, you just accomplished Mission Impossible. So now <laughs> what could possibly be next for you to accomplish? Yeah, I have a long-term goal of reaching financial independence by uh, 40, which is very ambitious. I did increase my income, <laughs> um, and I'm up to about 35000 a year, which is still pretty low. <laughs> so... Um, Short, short term goal for 2016, continue to increase my income, continue to increase my savings, um, reach financial independence by 40. And then post 40, I would love to do some traveling, um, spend a lot of time outside of the country, spend a lot of time inside the United States in a lot of different areas. So big dreams, great <laughs> big long term great dreams. Great. <laughs> so please tell our audience more about your site from frugal to free dot com. Yeah, I started it a year ago. I just had my blog anniversary, and it's all about maintaining a frugal lifestyle while working towards financial freedom. But I consider myself a very high energy and outgoing person. I like to do things. I like to travel. I like to eat well. I like to have adventures. And it's about doing those things on a budget. So how to go. I went on a road trip with my boyfriend through New Mexico, Texas, Utah, and Colorado and spent under $400. Wow. How to have amazing experiences on tight, tight budgets. Wow. Love that. Love that. Yeah. So to wrap this up, if there's somebody listening to the show right now who heard your story and, you know, they were inspired by your story, but then they look at their own situation and feel like they don't have what it takes to become debt free. What words of encouragement can you give to them right now? Debt is not forever. Just because you're in debt right now, just because you feel trapped right now, doesn't mean that that's going to be the rest of your life. I think really understanding that is the key to uh, starting to take back your power from debt. Um, so whether it's making that extra $30 payment a month or whether it's knowing that you are going to set a goal of debt freedom in five years, know that debt is not forever. It doesn't always have to be this way. Kara, your story is inspirational. You literally paid the price to be debt free. And so we're so thankful that you took time out of your schedule to come on the show and share your story with our audience today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, there you have it, guys. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that inspiring? Yeah, yeah. That lets you know that anybody in any situation at any income level, if they really desire to get out of debt, they can get out of debt. That's right. That just goes to show you, the person tuned in right now, that you definitely have what it takes to make this your journey as well. You can also check out all of our episodes over on our website at hisandhermoney.com. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Definitely share it, guys. Go to your social media pages, share it. There are so many people that would love to be inspired as well too. So help someone today to get started on their debt-free journey. Well, guys, it's been great. Until next time, Bye. peace.